Can everyone just try to talk real quick? I just want to make sure that everyone's mic is working on this channel as well. Sí, buenas tardes. Uh, yes, Melissa, I heard you. Um, Juan, I'm not sure if you were talking. Buenos días. Te escucho. Okay. I hear you. And do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Hola. Buenos días. Buenos días, Vivian. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, good morning. Hola. Hi, good morning. Andrea, no le vemos. Perfect. We cannot hola, see hola. you, Andrea. Good morning, Andrea. Can you hear me well? Sí, Andrea. Yes. Yes, yes. Perfect. Están viendo la presentación, ¿cierto? Sí. Okay. okay.
Hey, Laura, can we just do a, um, a quick mic check? We did it with everyone else when you hopped off. Just want to make sure before we get started. Absolutely. Hi, can you awesome. hear me? Yes, Great. you can. Perfect. Thanks. Wonderful. Okay, so we'll start in about one minute. Thanks. Hi everyone, thanks for joining and attending our webinar today titled Migration and Market Access, Connecting Venezuelan Communities in Colombia to Emergency Employment, Financial Inclusion, and Entrepreneurship Opportunities. For attendees joining, please use the chat feature located at the bottom of your screen for any questions or comments you have for the panel during the webinar, and please be reminded that this is a listen-only event. In addition, we're happy to announce that this is also a translated event, so please ensure that you have joined the correct language channel for your preference. If you experience any technical difficulties, please check your speaker settings. If we're somehow unable to resolve a sound issue on your end, please be reminded that you can turn on closed captioning at the bottom of your screen. If you have any other issues, please follow the instructions in the description of this event, or please feel free to send a message in the chat and we will be happy to assist you. Before I pass it over to Laura for an introduction, I'd like to note that this session will be recorded and will be available on the Market Links website. With that said, again, please be reminded that this is being recorded and over to you, Laura, for opening remarks. Thank you so much and enjoy. Hello, everybody. Um, I will just add that there are also um, instructions about how to select interpretation, and we will post those in Spanish to the chat as well. Um, hi, everybody. Buenos dias a todos y todas. Um, my name is Laura Meisner. I work with USAID's Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance as a Senior Economic Recovery Advisor, and I am so excited today to bring you speakers from two excellent consortia that we support in Colombia who work with uh, Venezuelan migrants, Colombian returnees, and other vulnerable community members to support their livelihoods and help them integrate into local markets. We have four excellent speakers. Um, Ms. Vivian Lorena Ordonez is the Deputy Program Director of CUA PUA, or ADN Dignidad, hosted by Action Against Hunger. She has been involved in national programs in Colombia since 2010. Her work focuses on empowering vulnerable populations and improving their living conditions through income generation tools. Ms. Luisa Fernanda Moreno is the Economic Recovery and Livelihoods Coordinator for ADM Dignidad. She has over 12 years of experience in development projects focusing on economic integration in rural and urban settings. For the Venesperanza Consortium, hosted by Mercy Corps, we have Ms. Andrea Gonzalez, who is the Strategic Alliances Specialist. She's an economist with 17 years of experience in economic and social development projects. And we have Mr. Juan Camilo Riveros Potero, who is the Deputy Director of the Venesperanza Consortium. And he ensures the technical and adaptive quality of all components of the program and has experience with public economic recovery and rural development programs in Colombia. I will now turn it over to our four speakers to present. Thank you. Gracias, Laura. Buenos dias. Thank bueno, you, Laura. Good morning. Somos, we are we're the uh, CUA uh, Consortium and the Venesperanza Consortium, the two consortium. We are leading these money transfer uh, programs. The, CA, the CUI is led by hunger against, uh, Action Against Hunger, 
and the Danish Refugee Council and the Ben Esperanza Consortium is led by Mercy Corps in association with Save the Children and the International Rescue Committee and World Vision. What do we do in Colombia? We implement a cash transfer program with the funding from USAID, BHA, where we provide humanitarian assistance to vulnerable migrant population from Venezuela and also Colombian returnees and the host communities. Um, and the purpose of this is to gain access to basic assets and services that contribute to alleviate their needs and to promote their into their integration into the Colombian society. Next slide, please. Good morning, everyone. We have been working together throughout uh, the Colombian territory. At present, we have a coverage of eight departments and we have closed. We have ended the work in other four. We have worked in other simultaneously and in other ones. Uh, we have been working independently. But the idea is to cover most participants in the program to date. We have uh, served uh, uh, by ADN and dignity. More more than um, 6,000 per persons and um, with uh, more than um, uh, 500,000. Since uh, 2022, we started this new adventure uh, of means of life where uh, we're going to provide more details in the following slides. And uh, in terms of the um, uh, entrepreneurship uh, path, uh, um, uh, CUA has uh, served 4,387 4, entrepreneurs with seed capital, Ben Esperanza, 2,807. Uh, In terms of employability, we have reached uh, 2,006. Uh, 1,513, and in the financial inclusion route, who uh, um, well, managed uh, 1,150 people, we in, in Venezuela 4,150 through 86 uh, uh, savings groups, and in Venezuela through 40, 433. You will look at the date, at the methodological details of each one of the consortium, where we have differences, where we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the, the the indication or the details of each one of the perspectives who has served uh, 139 participants with financial education 4950 in venezuela and there are persons with banking access next that we will go into further details in terms of the program cycle with Becky. Thank you. So, this, so since 2018, 2019, we have uh, covered more than 800,000 people through the monthly project cycle that we started with a community approach stage with different strategies in order to address the, uh, the, the migrant population, returnees and host population. So each partner association has a has has gone to the territories to try to find the population requiring humanitarian assistance and also through the references provided by other organizations and programs where we have done articulation in this stage. Then the two consortia uh, were doing the same eligibility requirements with the 100 and 120 questions focused on these eligibility requirements. The access of the household of uh, of the of the of the place to put security, watch the vocation of permanence. How how uh, long have they been in Colombia? Which are the, the economic and social and migration uh, conditions of them? And if within if there is any person with disabilities or with any critical health condition, and um, also we have also implemented since 2022 something really related to the strategies of uh, of the uh, of livelihood uh, and how have they coped uh, with this 
So in this eligibility uh, stage, we establish some questions that will help us pre-filter the different households in order to determine if they are more focused on entrepreneurship or if they want to find a job or if they are interested in the um, financial inclusion uh, route. So once we do this eligibility uh, survey, we do a duplication uh, process. So what this means is that Ven Esperanza and the CUA consortium, every month we do the duplication uh, process to make sure that the households receive just uh, once this humanitarian support for six months, but that they but only serve by one of the two consortiums. And we also manage this through the workbook program. So once we have the, the eligibility base, there is a percentage for sampling purposes who uh, who who are subjected to an on-site uh, visit go to their households. We ask them questions and we validate the conditions of vulnerability of these households in order to continue uh, to, in the program. So after this, there is, uh, we have a welcoming or an enrollment uh, stage where we establish the rules where we sign the agreements between each household and uh, each program. We also establish some key messages in terms of, of the healthy food, nutrition, health access, and uh, protection. And, and the coverage of protection. And it is also worth mentioning that we are working on awareness strategies and uh, campaigns against fraud. So this is a space of two or three hours where participants will get to know all the rules of, of the process, who we are, who are the donors, what's the strategy in terms of monetary transfer. We also uh, address uh, family economy. So this is a very safe spy a space for them where not only are they receiving the modality of money transfer, but this is also including these key messages. And after this, we have the economic, the active economic um, recovery component that we will explain later on. And this ends with the follow-up and the monitoring and verification to support to participants in terms of their satisfaction, satisfaction uh, as to the receipt of their monetary transfer. And we also ask some questions in order to improve the program. So we receive that feedback of the um, uh, selected persons for the post-monitoring. And um, in this monthly cycle, we guarantee flexibility in the processes in order to make sure that we adapt to the conditions, to the changes in context, and to what participants require. One. The floor is yours. So just to go into more into further detail as we have in the getting in the first slides, we have three uh, we have three routes in both consortium, although we have some methodology differences. Uh, so we basically, this is what we offer to each one, to the participants. The first one is an employability route where we provide training for employment. It is, this, it is important for us to have a differential um, care for the uh, regular and non-regular population in the country. Now, in this regard, we also uh, did a follow-up and we offer a complementary offering in order to have a better um, insertion to the labor market based on the follow-up given to these participants. Now, in terms of entrepreneurship, we provide group and individual training to these persons having a, a business idea or, or if they want to restore something um, uh, due to the migration that they had to Colombia. And after the training, we provide the skills, uh, this installed capacity in terms of entrepreneurship, and we provide seed capital to fund an investment plan that will allow them to, to succeed with their business or entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship idea. And then we provide technical support so that we can connect them with a complementary activity to have a more successful activity. It is uh, for us yeah, within this route, we need to have a very good profiling to the extent that we can diagnose and understand and select the best participants or the best entrepreneurs or the 
schools having uh, the best entrepreneurship uh, vocation of this world issue that the, the use of the seed capital will be the best possible. In terms of financial inclusion, we we establish uh, savings and loan groups for these participants work for, uh, for a period of time they can conduct engagement savings activities under a group activity. So within these uh, savings uh, groups, they can gain access to financial services depending on their migra migration sta uh, status, um, uh, either with uh, commercial banking or with other uh, fintechs where we have some uh, done some progress. And we also provide some financial education tips so that they can adopt or improve uh, sustainable savings uh, habits that will allow them to have a more resilience in terms of uh, revenue and savings. Given that the, that the methodology is based on uh, uh, so, uh, savings groups, uh, it is important to have cohesion so that they can uh, be aware of these savings activities and, and to generate a, work, a social network that will be support them in Colombia. In the following slides, we will see the further details, which are the contents and which are the perspectives of each one of the consortium um uh, uh, methodologies we're going to talk about crea which is the economic recovery thank you juan okay so the economic component uh seeks to improve the condition the conditions and and um, and um, uh, perspectives of the population, as uh, Bivia and uh, when have mentioned, there is a pre-selection or a pre-screening process, and then that's where we profile the participants, trying to, and we identify that these are the same businesses, and they have to, they need to have a sustainability uh, perspective in the, on the market. Then after the pre-selection process, the participants are subjected to training from uh, seven to 10 sessions where we work the, with them to gain access to the market, accounting uh, knowledge and topics related to the structuring of their business plan so that they can afterwards uh, can approach the approval committee where they uh, submit their um, uh, initiatives and, and uh, to indicate which are their objectives and how they're going to implement this uh, business in their territories. So that uh, so we strengthen this business plan with some capitalization that ranges from two hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars per business, and. Um, and we provide support in the investment process that they that they conduct with these funds. So they receive the money in cash and and then they acquire the assets or the tools or the machinery or the inputs or fit stuff that they need in order to strengthen their productive initiative. This is done to, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the participants. And then after that, we, in the following three months, the participants will have technical support uh, that uh, will go on site, that will do calls and that will do follow up in order so that they can uh, keep in touch to strengthen the weaknesses that uh, they may be experiencing while they impose or they reactivate their initiatives. Then after that, we conduct a, a, mon a monitoring and evaluation. We do a, a follow up of the program and then the purpose here is to um, get external resources where where participants can improve the skills that they have uh, for the products and services that they have to provide. So these are courses related directly with the activity that they conduct. And we are for all lives so that they can have a, a route that will allow them to continue the strengthening of their business. For that purpose, participants must must be of legal age uh, above 18 years of age, which is the legal age in Colombia, 
the need to have a business to reactivate. We also develop some uh, business ideas, but also appreciate or value the ideas that they have. They have to be beneficiaries of the program and that the need to have knowledge on the productive activities where they are going to develop their activity. So this is um, determined in the different interviews that we conduct. Then after this, uh, within the route uh, options, in the um, route options, there there is one aim that's at the employability, where we also conduct the profiling of the participants. This person is trained, which includes uh, four sessions, groups, two four group sessions and two individual sessions. So we work specifically on a guidance towards the search for employment and towards uh, get specifically of uh, labor uh, guidance in our case has uh, some criteria apart from being participants in the program and um, and those persons above the age of 18 and who may have um, their uh, legal documents so they need to gain access to employment or to jobs because they have the documents, the legal documents that will allow them to have a job. So it is important also to mention that we have, uh, we, there's a, a small roadmap uh, for those uh, persons having a uh, labor experience in Colombia who know how this market works and who need certain support work and, um, and perhaps a longer uh, process, which is, where those who, who join us, they're not aware of the right and responsibilities and, and the benefits of uh, obtaining a formal job. Next uh, slide, please. And then finally, within the service that were suggested for financial inclusion route, we, which is not excluding the two prior one, our participants can be uh, participants of the entrepreneurship and the employability routes, and at the same time, they can participate in the financial inclusion routes. These financial inclusion routes, as uh, indicated by Juan, is fundamental. Uh, they, they, they're providing, uh, we provide um, uh, financial education to Juan. We have virtual and uh, in-person training. Uh, we have our own platform for to provide the service. We also have the savings group, which is a strategy, but not a common a community strategy, which uh, purposes uh, not only just to gain access to the to the loans through their community, but also to the possibility to save and to and to progress in their in their business. 
So these last seven months for the consortium, I mean, in this, and there's no requirement in terms of uh, uh, standardization. So participants can uh, join the savings groups. Uh, and they need um, to gain access to the different services. And then finally, we also have the financial inclusion uh, line, which at this time has been implemented through through digital wallets, and and it seeks to articulate our participants with the supply in pro credit and in insurance and in access to everything related to the financial sector. And this route, it is important to have the documentation so that uh, you, so that the persons are uh, legal in Colombia, in this case it's the PPT, and this is fundamental for the Venezuelan population. And they also need to be of legal age. I'm gonna pass the floor to Andrea. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. So I just wanted to tell you that although we have the uh, Venezuela for Economic Recovery and Market Systems, it is important to mention that this hard, uh, participation has uh, taken place in terms of men and women. Next slide, please, one. So although we have more um, women participation in the economic uh, route, it is, they're also important among all the different participants. We want them to believe that it is important to, to improve their possibility to engage in the formal job uh, pathway in Colombia. The first one is the entrepreneurship, which uh, lasts 3.5 months. The first uh, moment is the eligibility that then we have learning, then graduation, the capitalization, and the articulation with key actors. In terms of eligibility, we, we uh, participants need, need to uh, meet the profile to become part of Ben Esperanza, but they need to have a clear business idea, which uh, has to be articulated with their living project, uh, which may lead them to improve their revenue possibilities. Then after this, we have discovered that we need to create a, a zero moment where participants can understand uh, which are the routes, which are the commitments, which are the benefits to participate. So this is why we created a moment zero with the psycho-emotional uh, components that participants can understand and generate uh, um, trust ties among them. This uh, specific moment has been very successful on the implementation in the program and it will be part of our lessons learned. Then after this initial moment, we go to the learning uh, route. We have eight sessions where we work on the on the introduction budget. Um, in the focus group, we have identified that the most appalling thing among participants is the construction of layers. They they, they enjoy uh, building the canvas because this allow them, allows them to understand, to shape their idea and how can they implement this in the short term. The most important aspect that participants have indicated has to do with costs, uh, learning how to calculate the gains that they can get from their entrepreneurship and this has been very appalling for them because this is something that uh, they did, didn't know at times they buy and sell and they do not estimate their gains we also discovered that they use the the media but um, but they they are not uh, well versed on on uh, on marketing so in the route we included a mark a digital marketing that will be implemented this and this new year of implementation this will take uh, two months of implementation. It is also worth highlighting that although we have eight sessions, if any participant that wants to reinforce his or her knowledge, or is not, or if there's something that is unclear, we have individual sessions uh, to provide individual advisory to participants in order to so that we do not leave anyone behind. Then we move on to an interesting emotional uh, part, which is Shark Tank. Uh, this is the most important moment of the project where participants have developed the learning sessions. They have accomplished the conditions to graduate. 
moment. This is a symbolic moment where we provide a, a certificate. We do we do an event. They they go well dressed. We have uh, internal and external juries that have been briefed in term in terms uh, in order for them to know about the mechanics of the project. Then we do a verification of the conditions. They explain their ideal business, and then we get to capitalization. In capitalization, we provide support to 100% of the participants engaged in the process. They have a prior uh, training, which which has to do with uh, shopping support. We explain how is it that they can shop or buy, how can they approach the formal market, how can they get a, a, a a quotation, what's fraud, what is not fraud. And this has allowed them to empower in terms of their purchases. So we provide this purchasing and investment process. And this goes hand in hand with the follow-up process. We do visits, individual visits to each one of the participants to make sure that the investments are made according to the investment plan. These uh, last 1.5 months approximately. Once this ends, then we move on to the join or the articulation. It is important that we engage actors of the financial sectors uh, who provide briefings, financial education, and financial education. And uh, the participant is, is um, standardized. Then we provide the support to uh, to the banking process. Some of our entrepreneurs have digital watch wallets that allow them to do purchasing and selling activities of their products and services in the market. An important piece of information is that we have uh, success cases. Some some of them have uh, have uh, become a jo uh, partners of, of, they provide, they, they're becoming providers of them, they provide catering services. But it is important to mention that it is important to uh, for them to become formal. Some of them have an RUT, um, uh, not, not everyone has access, but uh, the message is that, uh, that they need to go that a step ahead. The seed capital is the starting point of the entrepreneurship, but apart from this, they have a long way to go together with pu public and private actors. We also want to support them on the trading, so this is why our, we're, we're going to provide digital marketing so that is, it can become a showcase uh, for them to connect to a market. Juan, no sé si podemos avanzar con la ruta. La siguiente ruta es gracias. Nuestra siguiente ruta Juan, es la ruta de empleabilidad. Esta es una ruta. Move on to the next route. This is the employability route. This has six key steps. We have the identification of interest. We begin by knowing what the participant wants, what is their profile, what is their level of education, what type of experience they have to talk to them, approach them, and learn about their uh, adaptation to the Colombian uh, marketplace and how could they build a better CV or curriculum. We host a practical or hands-on uh, workshop where they will be uh, walked through in the elaboration or drafting of a CV. And with our team, we help them to build a better profile to seek employment, to find a job. And we connect them to the Colombian labor system, which is different to the Venezuelan uh, labor system. What are the requirements? Where can they send their CVs? What is the best way to access employment opportunities? This, of course, together with anti-fraud issues, we have identified that there are participants that, for the lack, due to the lack of knowledge, have been victims of fraud. And this is why we have included within the route special uh, heading to talk about how to identify fraud, what are the potential cases of fraud, and what is the channel in case they identify that they are victims or could become victims of fraud. And a key data is how can we coordinate ourselves with the business sector? We have had, we have hold, we have held uh, entrepreneurial breakfast with business people, uh, facilitating information on the opportunities that they can offer to Venezuelan population. Um, 
Of course, this together with mean Colombia and the public service of employment, although the program and the consortium don't have the capacity to ensure the successful uh, labor employment, we have undertaken to bridge the gaps and to help them to connect them with the business sector. And we have been able to engage participants in the labor market formally and especially in tourism and construction sectors and housekeeping services. And in the future, uh, we expect to consolidate, we look forward to consolidate this partnership to help the migrants to access the labor market more easily. We continue with the financial inclusion route. Thank you, Juan. This route is wonderful because has led us to dream of and connect entrepreneurship with inclusion. This route has become a unique route because our participants save, they actually save, and these savings strengthen sustainability of these ventures. There are four moments. The first moment is the profiling, where we make sure that they want to save, they have the interest and the commitment to save, but we'll implement something that is moment zero. At moment zero, we develop a strategy to generate trust. We have measured the result of this strategy, and that has resulted in social cohesion, friendship networks between the participants, and uh, personally, uh, saving group can transcend, and we create the install capacity for a better opportunity in the future. And therefore, we have three sessions where through assistance, we tell them what are the routes, we help them to create governance, to choose or to elect their board of directors, and we help them with the first transactions. And then we move to this third moment when we have the purchase of shares. Uh, these are moments where they determine when it, or what to buy. It goes from 5,000, 8,000, 8,000 Colombian pesos. They are autonomous to determine how they want to continue with the process. Something that is very, it's a curious fact is that we don't allow more than two people of the same household to be in the same savings group to avoid a uh, monopoly on the administration of the money. We have nine sessions where they are totally independent and autonomous for in saving. And they graduate and they make a distribution of the assets. Uh, it's very important that before the end of the cycle, it's necessary, it's crucial that the participants can learn and receive training. Uh, training in depth to continue in depth uh, receiving tools we give them books where they can keep the records accounting records a savings account vault uh, where they can and they also can strengthen their leadership profiles and we support them for the purchase of shares and in order for them to become more autonomous and independent we have 78 uh, savings groups and subsequently they distribute their contributions. To, we distribute the resources, each one take their earnings, collect their earnings, and it's very important. In a cross-cutting way, we perform mass days of inclusion in the banking system. And second, we support the development of events. There are groups of savings that, in spite of the fact of having the resources, we help them to do raffles, uh, fairs, family encounters that allow them to create income and avoid this obstacle to help them uh, being able to save. This is in relation to employability, financial education, and we hope that this will serve in the future for the participant to achieve an economic successful recovery. Now we continue with Luisa. Thank you, Andrea. In addition to the exercise on follow-up and monitoring, we have an accountability process with the community and we identify not only 
how this is working, how the programs are moving on, are going on, but also what new ideas, what is going well and what is not going so well. In the process of these lessons learned, we have identified according to our route, some of them are connected to the partnership, the strategic partnerships. What we have learned in this process or in this journey is that having a strategic partnerships and having comprehensive assistance and being able to adapt to the needs of the participants. In relation to uh, labor orientation, financial inclusion, the lessons learned are oriented or guided or uh, aimed at strengthening and creating tools and build, uh, install capacity for the participants for labor inclusion or to help them learn how to access the financial market in Colombia. And the importance to have information and legal advisory for all the doubts. And as Andrea mentioned in the development of these anti-fraud uh, chats or conversations, help the participants to access in a secure manner to the labor offers, job offers, and avoid situations or elude situations where they could become potential victims of uh, trafficking persons and whatnot and see why, how important it is this relationship to approach the private sector and learn the gaps that result in obstacles for the migrant population to access the formal labor market. It doesn't necessarily mean that in the most of the cases is because of regularization. Many times it's related to training, education, and skills to access and remain in the labor market. We have identified together jointly the importance of selecting local members to participate in the employability route. It's important, it's crucial to have not only one person they have to generating income and providing the sustenance for the household. For us, it's important that this employability route, while people comply with the requirements of the consortiums, they can access knowledge and generate, based on this knowledge, access to labor market. It's crucial also to say that the savings groups need to be promoted. We need to support the saving groups, savings groups and the cohesion that is created and the trust that is built in these spaces of savings and credit. These are spaces especially designed for communities to have the peace of mind that they are sharing with peers, not only a space of saving, like what you can do in a bank, in your community, but spaces where they can share and collect more money for, for saving. As Andrea proposes, extra, uh, activities like fairs, uh, Ruffles, this not only creates a better, better community, but it increases the opportunity to save and the opportunity to access credits and loans that they can use to leverage their initiatives. It's important to help them continue these saving groups because the methodology is installed, remains, and that's why in the sessions of assistance that we perform in the seven month period, we implement in each one of the sessions part of the methodology in such a way that when they finish, uh, the, the, the participants uh, uptake not only the physical tools to continue with the savings group, but also with the tools of the methodology 
to for these savings groups to work over time. And definitely, I must say, the people that participate in entrepreneurship are the people who have, who are more brave, they are more open to credit, they are more open to work with others. This has been very interesting, interesting in this in this exercise, the savings groups that are put together and that participate in a better way or have a better performance during the, during this process are the ones that are made up by entrepreneurs. And that has this has become a strategy that allows the entrepreneur not only to develop these support networks, but also to have access to resources in given moments, especially for production processes. Thank you, Luisa. Some lessons learned uh, in the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship route, it's important to participate in entrepreneur, entrepreneurship uh, fairs. The routes of our entrepreneurs have been meaningful so far through the two consortium. We have, as a matter of fact, we have participated together in entrepreneurship uh, fairs with participants from each one of the organization of the two consortium. And as Andre mentioned, to be able to support them to participate in these entrepreneurship fairs, we help them to strengthen digital marketing skills. This is very interesting because they learn what these strategies are and they go in depth on how to access and to sell their products or services through different social networks and whatnot. Another lesson learned, common lesson learned, is to recognize the motivation of the ventures and the commitment of each one of the routes. That's why once the entrepreneurial entrepreneurship and employability route end, we give a certification of completion with the route. This allows them to have a physical document to celebrate that they have completed this route. We also provide during the training process, as was explained in the entrepreneurship route, participants highlight past uh, earnings, budget, income, profits. This is very important for the two consortiums and the pro programs that implement this route that we provide the tools to the entrepreneurs vis-a-vis -vis the purchase processes of assets, inputs, considering their Colombian regulation. And we can strengthen this, this education and we can also support purchase and visits to entrepreneurs to guide them in a, in a good assets and inputs purchase process to help them establish the budget and identify which have been the profits in their entrepreneurial initiatives in their ventures. And lastly, uh, as a lesson learned, we motivate the ventures to have different payment methods in order to be able to diversify these modalities, some of them through the banking system and others like digital wallets, like in Colombia, we use Davi Plata, Neki and whatnot. This is very important for our businesses, as Luisa mentioned, for the three routes we have read that it's very important to generate these strategic partnerships to be able to establish um, uh, these strategies that we have with our participants. The floor is yours, Juan. This is a huge program with complex routes, with a population with so many characteristics and angles associated to the migration status to the population profile. We have different challenges and uh, several challenges we keep working on and which constantly we seek to improve. One of those is the capacity, understanding that in the world we live today with so many technological developments, breakthroughs, innovations, digital innovation that has made life easier in many aspects for education, 
innovation, entrepreneurship, and the like. Uh, developing digital skills has been one of the opportunities that we see fit for the participants to achieve connectivity, to be able to have good devices, good to be integrated, to receive good signal, to facilitate training and education has been an obstacle on which we keep working on. This affects not only aspects like entrepreneurship and also the possibility to have these digital wallets and online training. This is something that we are keeping an eye on and we want to keep working on this, to bridge the gaps, these digital gaps for our participants. And the other challenge that we have found is coordination or articulation. Our target population, since they are migrants, is divided into two big groups. One is the population that is legalized, they have a permit to stay in the country, and the others, those that have arrived recently, that don't have a regularization status. This has resulted in a barrier for those that are not regularized to access health care, education, and in a large proportion, the work that we invest is to seek institutional partners that allow us to supply or to meet those needs for the participants. Why? Not only for a humanitarian assistance, but also because we know and we understand that the participants motivated participants that are being able to meet their immediate needs, they can participate more actively, more aware, cognizant, and they make the best use of these livelihood activities. I'll turn it over to you, Andrea. Thank you. Moving on with the challenges that we have, common challenges that we have. I believe it's the prior uh, uh, slide one. All right. In relation to the common challenges, we have identified incidents and sustainability. One of our challenges has to do with the fact that there are in private institutions that financial institutions that are not open, they don't have procedures, standard procedures to ensure or facilitate access to the migrant, non-regularized, non-legal population. This has resulted on restrictions on the possibility to develop together with them inclusion in the banking system. This creates a need to work in advocacy with private and public stakeholders to create agile and safe procedures. The durability of the procedures of the route of the route is short. This requires a strategy that connects the entrepreneurs with supplementary education and economic resources to strengthen their venture for a better capitalization. And finally, we have men and women, but the participation is especially of women. It's necessary to incorporate a gender-sensitive approach, implement in a better way, and to facilitate to help women to have a secure income generation through financial inclusion, employability, and entrepreneurship. I'll turn it over to for the recommendations to Vivian. I, I, well, we have several questions and we're running out of time. See, Laura, yes, please. There are there are some really excellent questions. Um, let's we will leave the the recommendations um slide up so that people can read them. Um, but there have been a couple of very good questions, and I want to make sure that we get time for them. Um. The first one is from Stefania Chiveri, and her question is for Andrea. Um, she wanted to know about, because we know that with savings groups, it is so important and difficult to build trust and cohesion. Um, she wanted a little bit more information on the, the moment zero and on some of the, the psychosocial activities there. Um, yes. Uh, 
Ok, Andrea, de pronto si quieres profundizar un poco And más en el momento Andrea, cero y... Would you like to delve into uh, social cohesion? Bueno, eh, las actividades concretamente que realizamos. All right. Yes. Uh, specific activities that we perform has to do with connecting the emotions of the participants with trust. We do this by through, through observation. What do they learn? Where do they come from? What's their experience? And the saving groups have to be close to each other in neighborhoods or communities where they can have easy access to each other. And in places of easy access, in third place, from the moment zero, when we create this, the saving groups, the facilitators need to be the same. When there is a change of the leaders, this creates a break. And in fourth place, complementary activities. Uh, if we make, a, if we host a fair, an invitation to the family members or a raffle, we build uh, piggy banks with the family members. With recycled material, they build their piggy banks and that connects the children the members of the household with savings, and this nourished the activities and the piggy banks have the colors of the Colombian and the Venezuelan flags, uh, mottos associated to the land, the region, the food, the cuisine, the music, and this has helped to create a connection. And in relation beyond us having the trust of moving on is key to engage financial institutions, the small and medium-sized institutions that have a job process that can understand the population and assist them during the process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next question is from Valentino, who's with Asa Bancaria. Um, she wanted to know what kind of support um, do people need from the banks? And then um, for time, I'll also include a question from Paulina, um, who wanted to know if there's been an impact evaluation of the livelihood components. My understanding is that that's something that you're working on. Um, a question of whether the entrepreneurship training includes soft skills, such as leadership, which I know that is a, a definite yes, that is a huge part of it. Um, and then what sorts of profiling questions um, like in the questionnaire matter the most in terms of finding the businesses that could most benefit? Um, I'll open that up to any panelist who wants to address them. Thank you, Laura. Juan, please, in recommendations, there is precisely a space where we uh, strengthen a common recommendation to work together with the financial sector to facilitate access, for instance, to bank accounts, microcredits, and ensure for the Venezuelan migrant population. To answer, Valentina, what type of support we need from the bank system, banking system or banking institutions, we need to be able to sit together with you to explain how our participants, Venezuelan participants, see, identify the barriers, the obstacles they have to access the financial services. We have, and we're open to be able to gather in a meeting to improve the communication between the messages that the financial sector want to convey versus what the financial, the, the, the migrant population need to understand. A com this is a common recommendation. We need to have incidents or to approach these big programs that we have for the Venezuelan migrant population to bring it closer to the to the to bring these services, the financial services to the Venezuelan population and to work jointly. The second question, I can answer the second question. Yeah, we have made any impact assessment of the program. In 2022, the CUA consortium conducted an assessment of the impact of this program. We have some results and these results were shared in 2022. We can find the results in the website of the program, ADN Dignidad, or you can also can get a hold of us 
can get in touch with us and we can share the results directly. This proved, this showed some very interesting programs on the cash transfer during the last years. And uh, a, a, a caveat is that we are conducting a second assessment with the population that participated two years ago. And we will show the result in September. We will share the results on the impact 18 months later, sometime after receiving the cash transfer. This is very interesting what we have found, but we don't want to create any spoiler. We will be uh, disseminating the invitation for the sharing for, for sharing this result of the second impact assessment of the cash transfer uh, process. Uh, I would like to add to what Vivian said. In ADN Dignidad, we have this assess impact assessment that is focused on the cash component. And in Ben Esperanza, we are formulating an impact assessment for the next year where we will include the component of livelihood to see what is the impact, the positive impact, or maybe not very positive impact of this intervention. It's important to keep in mind that for the training on top skills, yes, we effectively have included this in the component. We consider that these are very important tools for any entrepreneur, but an uh, interesting fact, we work hard on hard skills, communication and others with the saving groups because the saving groups we work with, they establish their own governing or board of directors, a press, a chairman, an accountant, and they start to become the leaders of the group. And we need them to acquire or to develop soft skills to make the group work and, and and operate efficiently to tackle any conflict that may arise. And now in relation to entrepreneurs, it's important for us to validate not only if they have experience in any type of entrepreneurship or venture, but how they think, what is their mindset as entrepreneurs, how they make decision in this a -vis their business idea, if they have a, a competition, how do they tackle the competition? These are characteristic questions to determine what, how they think and what is their mindset to help, that can help them grow beyond just having a business, a simple business. We seek to help them develop entrepreneurial skills. Camila, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, there were other questions related to articulation of the programs and methodologies uh, directly in the in the consortium we have a new programmatic consortium a very concrete one and we have the spaces where we share these processes and this progress in such a way that the learning process is shared between all the participants and somehow in the two consortiums, we have similar programs for the development of the population that we are assisting, and especially because we are covering different territories. This allows us to share this type of experiences, these lessons learned, to move on, to move forward in all the territories where we have presence with these methodologies and processes. I don't know if there is any additional question. Um, we have one more. We are a little bit over time, um, but there was one additional question from Claudio about how the two consortia work together, which is not only the two consortia, but between you, there are seven different um, NGOs. And one of the things that I think is special about this program is that you do all work together but that there's always a lot of experimentation and trying new things. Um, you know, do we make the trainings a little bit shorter? Do we spread them out over more time? Do we start this thing before that thing? And then you're always sharing with each other um, about what is working where and, and why and what's not working. Um, so I hope that answers it. Um, we are unfortunately over time. There have been a lot of really excellent questions and I want to thank our panelists um, so much.
um, Juan, Luis, Vivian, and Andrea. And of course, thank you to our excellent translators, Sandra and Carlos, um, and to our organizers as well. Um, many thanks. This will be recorded and shared. Um, so any colleagues who missed it will be able to listen to it later. We'll also have the transcript published. Um, I will turn it over to Lauren to close. Yeah, thank you everyone so much. This went really well. Um, thank you for the translation. It went very well. This was our first time doing it. So again, um, thank you for agreeing to, uh, you know, work through all of this with us for the first time. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And um, yeah, this will be posted on the Market Links website within usually about 24 hours. So feel free to share it, watch it again. And yeah, thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. Muchas gracias a todos. Un placer. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Gracias. Hasta luego. Feliz día. Thank you. Bye-bye and have a nice day. Thank you.